Hey, Boaz here from Next Pittsburgh and greetings from Aspenwall. As you see, the Allegheny River is behind me and we're going to find out how the water in this river gets to your house thanks to the folks at the Pittsburgh Water and Sewer Authority. That's right, it's another installment of Yinzer Backstage Pass. We're going to check out a pumping station. We're going to see where all this water gets uh, filtered and clean so it's ready for you to, you know, make some hot coffee or tea with, brush your teeth with, whatever. And to tell us how all this magical water stuff works, we've got Sarah Bull who has a long title that I can't quite recall. What is what is your title here? I'm the senior group manager of water programs. I manage the water engineers. Okay, and so you're hanging out in places like this all the time, presumably. Yes. <laughs> and so where are we right now? So we are at the Aspenwall pump station. So after the water comes into the river, is treated, it's... So there's like two giant pipes or something just like sucking in river water. Yes, two giant pipes sucking in river water. It goes into the, the Ross pump station clear at the end. Um, is treated, um, first it goes through clarifiers, which takes out kind of the larger p particles of sediment that's in the water. Goes across the river. How do you make sure like a fish doesn't get in? Oh yeah, fish will get in, but I mean, we have screens. Okay. So at the, yeah, fish can get in, but there's inlet screens and this, the inlet screens keep the fish from getting out. So the large debris, like the sticks and, and, and the leaves and all that gets crap, captured by the, the screens ahead of, ahead of that. So yeah, I've been at water treatment plants where we saw a fish like swimming around, not here, but I was at one where we saw a fish swimming. Not naming names. Not naming names. <laughs> Not this part of the country, but yeah. So after that, it goes across the, the to the, uh, across past the waterworks mall and settles out a little bit more. Comes back here, goes through our um, rapid sand filters where it takes out all the the smallest particles, and then from there it goes into our 40 million gallon clear well. Okay. What that does is it provides the final disinfection step to kill any bacteria that might be in the water, bacteria, viruses, pathogens. And then from there, it either goes across the river to our Brucken pump station, where it's pumped into our two large highland reservoirs, or it goes to here, Aspen Mall pump station, where it's pumped to our Landfer reservoir. The Landfer reservoir serves the north side of the city. Okay, well, let's go check out this pump station and see what's happening in here. There, it's, There's a beautiful musical hum in the air as these baby blue machinery are doing something. So these pumps were the original pumps that were installed in like 1913 were huge. That's why this building is so large, right? So the, they were steam driven pumps that went all the way to the ceiling. They were replaced in the 50s, more efficient, more sustainable. Um, and these pumps have been running since the 50s. They've been rehabbed, they've been rebuilt, but they're the same pumps from the 50s. When we replace the clear well, these pumps aren't gonna serve the purpose anymore. We need pumps that can be more reactive and these pumps just can't do that. Plus, they're not as efficient as, the, as you can get pumps now. The motors are outdated. So these four pumps will be replaced with new pumps. What is all this machinery we're looking at? Like, is there water going through these big blue pipes right now? Yes, yeah, so the water comes in from the clear well through a large 72 inch diameter main and then comes in through the basement and then comes up. Hold on, I've lost. You lose a pipe? Huh? Yeah, I've lost a pipe. <laughs> so basically it comes up, goes through the pump, and then go and discharges, and then it goes out um, to the landfill reservoir through a 60-inch diameter main that was built in the early 1900s as well. So it's a 60-inch riveted steel. So back then they would have these steel plates that they would curve, and then there's rivets. Will that, like, last forever? Um, so... It's really expensive to replace a pipe. Not only that, like two of the pipes that we're rehabbing are riveted steel or wrought iron, and some of it's wrought iron. It goes under the zoo. Like it goes under the zoo. And so we can't replace that. So part of this work that we're doing is we're, re we're rehabbing it. We're basically lining the pipe with a carbon fiber lining, which will basically make it a brand new pipe on the inside structurally. So. They've lasted this long. We, we've done like um, concrete lining of them over the years, but now we have more so sophisticated linings that will be stronger, they're thinner, and they'll last longer. Cool, and you said we could poke our heads downstairs to sort of see some of the pipes yeah. down there? Yeah, it's, it's pretty impressive. More I watch. We've got some like 
B-roll photographers around us too. There's a lot happening at the Pittsburgh Water and Sewer Authority today. It's an exciting day to be here. This is where the water comes in. So it goes up here into the pump and then it comes back down over on this side. All the water we've seen here has gone through all five or six steps of purification, of, of cleaning, and now this is ready to head to one of the reservoirs. In, where I live in Squirrel Hill, I guess I'm getting water from one of the Highland reservoirs. Yes. So basically we pump it up to the reservoirs and then that's what feeds um, that's what feeds the distribution system into your houses. So it's basically when you have like a large tank of water, it provides like a constant pressure to your house so you're not co constantly having differing pressures. What it also does is it allows us only to pump during certain times of the day because you don't want to pump 24 seven, it's a waste of energy. So you pump, fill up the reservoir and let the reservoir feed the system. So right now it's clearly pumping. Yes. Like in 15 minutes, could it just stop pumping because the reservoir is full? Well, so right now we're pumping um, almost all the time because to get ready for this land for the, for the Clearwell bypass work, we're, um, like I said, we're replacing the Highland 2 liner and cover. So we just started draining the Highland 2 um, reservoir this week. The brilliance of the Pittsburgh water system is that Lanfer reservoir can feed the city through three river crossings. So the system was built to be redundant. So when they built the system, you know, 100 years ago, they, they were pretty smart about it. So pumps right now are going to be pumping a lot over the next year because they're feeding a whole other portion of the city. Wow. And so from the time that you get the water out of the river uh -huh. to the time it's in the reservoir, you know, ready to be gravity fed into your house, how long does that take? It's a, I mean, it's days. I think in the sed, sed basins, it's like three days in the sed basins. The land for reservoir can hold um, probably probably 10 days worth of water. Um, the Highland 2 reservoir can hold a, um, a few days worth of water. Um, so the water, you know, it takes a few days to get to your system. That's why we we rechlorinate it along the way um, to make sure that it's it's disinfected. So you're, the water you're getting out of your sink probably hasn't been in the river for a week or so? Probably not. Yeah. Probably not. And so this really looks... Yeah, this just sort of looks like it's a, a poorly maintained like sports field. Yes, it looks like a, it looks like a bad soccer field. So this is the, the Clearwell. So this is 40 million gallons. This was built in like 1907. Underneath this are these is this huge structure that the water goes through. And basically the water slowly moves through the clear well to give it ample time to be in contact with the chlorine so that all those pathogens, viruses, whatever might have been in that river water that wasn't removed by the filters or the clarifiers um, basically gets, inact we call it inactivated. Um, we call it contact time. And so you're going to redo all this. Does that mean you're going to rip this all up and build something new also under the ground? Yes. So the problem with this clear well, so this, like I said, the Pittsburgh system was brilliantly built that we have all these redundancies. If this reservoir is out of service, we can serve it from this reservoir. If this pump is out of service, we can turn on this pump. All of that exists except for the clear well. So the clear well, by today's standards, you would build it with like different sections so that if you wanted to take out a section to clean or maintain it, you know, fix the concrete, inspect it, you would be able to do so. This is just one big cell. So right now we can't take this clear well out of service. So that's why we're building basically um, from this gatehouse, we're building a huge bypass that will bypass around the clear well and that we'll basically be ripping this out and putting in a new one that will have cells that we can take out of service and, and it will be a little more um, flexible. Sort of a more modular system. Yes. And so, like, if you did have to fix something now, do you ever send someone in there in scuba gear? Yeah, we've sent divers down. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, we've sent divers down um, to, to inspect it. We also have robotics. So we have a couple different methods. We have, um, we have methods where... You, 
um, you can send, it's almost kind of like a camera with a parachute and it, it goes by the velocity of the water. Um, that's actually how we inspect our large diameter mains and it has like acoustics, it can like listen for leaks. Um, but we also have divers and they like, they dress up in, you know, like the old school 20,000 leagues under the sea gear. It's pretty okay. spectacular. Uh, yeah. Wow. Yeah. So we had them, um, we use them for, for leak detection um, or for inspection. We use them like if we have, um, we'll have large chambers that there might be like a, a large kind of gate valve and they'll go down and inspect it. So we, we use them often for, for inspections and to try to help us um, pinpoint issues in our system. Gosh, well, this has been so cool and just like mind blowing to hear about how all this works. So Sarah, thank you for all you do to give us clean water to drink. We appreciate it. Yeah, thank you. I'm, I'm always happy to talk about it.